Good morning and welcome back to Home Renovations Expert. Steve, I'm back here again on this beautiful, solid, gorgeous looking composite decking. So, if you didn't watch yesterday's, basically we've got the go ahead for the steps. They are definitely staying now, that is a, a feature. So, in a little bit, I'll show you what I'm gonna do is, just to make this a slightly more <coughs> finished edge, I'll run a planer down it and put a little like angle on there. Um, I'll also show you me putting these in and fitting them to the deck. Um, the other thing I'm now going to be doing is, again, if you watch yesterday's video, you can see this trim, the finished trim across there, looking very nice. I'm about to do the same on the other side, over here. So yesterday, I used my fest tool, my plunge saw to like just get rid of all this stuff, get it out of the way. So I create my perfect space, get my right level with it. Um, and I'm about to, because I did say I continued today in the last video, chop this back edge off. So you can see that's gonna be the top. Okay, so this bit is a bit that kind of be impacting on the ground basically, but there's not enough gap to allow it in. Cause you can see all this stuff is just pretty much level there, which means there's nowhere for that part to disappear in. If I put it on, it just keeps the whole thing raised up too far. So I'm gonna take it off. Cause again, for me, it's a two second job. So you can see Festool rail there, I've got it on. One of the sleepers, I'm gonna sacrifice one side of it because it doesn't matter because it'd be turned over. So I'm gonna use that, sat it on the edge beautifully, put this on so my rail sits nice and flush and isn't gonna go anywhere. And you just see the line up. So I'm literally just taking off this part here, which is a bit that'd be impacting on the soil. This is obviously the top. So I just run the blade down, take all this back bit off all the way through, all the way through there. And I'll essentially just be left with the top of it then. And that'll just go straight in there once I put my supports in. So I'll show you me doing that now as well. And then happy days, crack on. Although I, I know I say it nearly every day, but I just have to finish my cup of tea first. I don't just make it up. My clients are the best clients. Like I've had biscuits, I get tea. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so I'm gonna drink that, get that finally set up and then crack on and get a car. Right, like I say, there is all set up and ready to go. So all I'm gonna do now, is run my blade down it and job is a good one. But what I'm gonna do is, so obviously my blade cuts on this side, so I'm just gonna drag it down so that I'm gonna clear the first part of the cut here, because if I left it like the other way around, I'll be starting part way through. So I'm gonna drag it down there, just a tiny bit of overlap, so we need for these bad boys. Line out ref lear across there, so it's basically the same. And just adjust this one. And then that is it, away we go. Up again, and then finish off your cut. And there you go. I'll rinse and repeat, do the same on the other end of it, and then we'll see if it fits. Which hopefully it will. So, there you go. It's all finished trimmed. You can see I literally just dropped it in there just to make sure it's gonna lie flat and it is absolutely pucker. So what I'm gonna do now is pull it back out. Not easy, just one end, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Uh, and now I'm gonna chop some of the old bits of decking. So I'll have a bit that sort of disappears underneath here, about that sort of deep. I'll screw that in and essentially that then sits on top of that at the perfect level to marry up with that one then. 
but I should go cut a few pieces and I shall show you. So just sorting up the uh, saw. I suddenly remember, that's something I do every single day before I use this thing, and I don't think I've ever told in any of my videos actually, is that I always check to make sure when I set to zero, sometimes they end up going just out in a little bit. Even from day one of having this, I don't know if you can see that mark, but you can see that that does not align with the zero. But ironically, that is where it actually locks in. So on the grooves on the teeth, it locks in there, but that is not aligned with that. And yeah, I could probably undo that. It's the first time I've looked at it and adjust it. But I don't really care about that part because what I always do is I always put a little set square on it and then I will lower this down and I'll just make, see if I can get the camera. I'll just make sure that that lines up beautifully with that and runs smooth without impacting it or any dead spots to the back. And the reason I do that is because, especially when you're doing decking, you don't want any of the cuts on the ends. Let me grab a piece. I don't want to be doing this lovely, lovely cut here and it ends up being very slightly skewed. I mean, I'm over exaggerating it, but you kind of get the idea that it's in not square because that's just going to be a pain. So. It takes two seconds to just double check, make sure it's set. I know I'm confident every cut I do, that is gonna be the perfect 90 based on these being straight. So yeah, just a little little tip there for you on how to set up your saw. Hello, right. So like I say, I've got like my 70 mil bits cut. Like I say, it's just an old bit of deck board. Job is done. I'm doing it every, so I'm leaving two spares. So one there, spare, spare, next one. So working like that. I basically hover it in between through the center, so it's about three and a half centimeters either side. What I then do is this. So what I'm doing, because I'm clever, so <laughs> ironically, the spaces between the actual deck board, they look like this, okay? So I'm using that upside down as my spacer so that I know the drill holes are exactly the same. So I'm just holding it about 10 mil off the edge of the board from that side to there. But obviously, I could keep it on this section, flush there. I don't know, my screw hole. Look at that. Clever, isn't it? So, I just give those a little pilot, and then I just finish them off. Make sure I punch all the way through. Like so. I then grab this, and just hold it roughly about halfway through. I then pilot through my new hole into the actual support bracket. Got my screws ready to go. So these again are just the screws that come with the brackets. So they're perfectly color coordinated for the deck board. Cause you know, you're gonna see these screws. So you want it to be nice and neat. What I'll do then is just pull that through. Just make sure that is nice and flush. That is one side done. Rinse and repeat. So just give it a bit of support on that end as I pilot it. Like so, and then and that's it done. That is not going anywhere now, and perfectly fine. So when I now drop me board like this, I've got a few over that way. Hey, watch the camera, Steve. Watch the camera. So I put that on like that over there. That I now sit on. You can see those. That just takes any bounce out of it. I'll then screw it in place using the same process. It's just literally put that on there, find the center mark, pilot it, screw straight through, and that is that one done and dusted. It is as simple as that. And I know this is a bit of a faff, people are like, you know, is it worth it? But it really is because it just finishes this edge, just makes it look neater. Yeah, and it's just that kind of thing. You'll never look at it again, but when you do properly look at it, you go, well, it's been done right. So yeah, happy days. And there you go. Done the same for the little one. Basically just chopped it out and then use the saw to just chop off the back of it so it fits flush. And now that is it. All done and looking absolutely jobbly. So my next job for the moment will be get this threshold in. Say threshold, it's basically fascia board. Uh, but we use it as a cover cap basically because I will whip it off and show you. You can see this one is pretty not very good nick uh the client did have a good scrub of it and i can really tell it looks amazing you did awesome trying to clean it uh considering where it started off at but it's just a bit banky and as you can see the decking board is in contact at this end 
and then down this end, if I come a bit further, you can see there is a gap because the window is absolutely a bit pierced, a little bit. Uh, so by putting this on and the front of this being taller than obviously the front across there, you know what I mean? It sits on the decking, so you just lose that difference. And also it's going to look a lot neater. And because it is a fascia board, it's nine mil thick. So it will take being walked on once I trim it to the right depth to be there. So I'll trim it across here where I need to, to get it in. Uh, what I'm going to do as well is discuss it with a client. I think it's going to look neater. So I could obviously cut it and trim it so it fits like that. But then you've got all this crap and shite and it just looks a bit manky. So what I'm going to do is get rid of these bits and I'm going to put this all the way through, like so, because I just think that line just follows a bit nicer. But then back here, I'm just going to fill up this bit, you can see, with pea shingle. So it just takes the eye off of looking down at the crap, and I think that's going to look a really neat solution. And this is going to run beautifully all the way through to the other end. Get a pea shingle down the back of here, this little gap as well, just to kind of you know, fill it up and make it look a bit neater. Uh, so I'll also then obviously have to just chop this side across here, to the right length and then i've got a little bit of plastic trim which i'll bespoke make to make an end cap for that as well so that way you won't be looking at this as nice as that is i'll create a little bespoke piece there and just silicone it on then that thing will just get silicone to the original one easy peasy in it uh so yeah it just makes a neater solution for that but i'll show you me trimming it all up and stuff like that in a momentos so what I've done is, I've taken my measurement from the edge of the door, just to about, just a bit over five mil over, just so I've got a bit of extra space. Uh, Cause I've got bits that jut out and I've got to cut around. So I want a bit of wiggle room to kind of get it in. Uh, so I've done that. And then what I've done is, when you're doing this kind of thing, you want to make sure you take your measurement from the right point. So I've set it all up for a cut, which is gonna be slightly more difficult to show you now, but as it kind of comes down and returns just around this corner here, you want to make sure that when you measure from the outside edge, which is essentially is from there, I don't want my 80 mils to be marked from there to there, because actually on the front, I've still got the 10 mil front plate. So actually it's going to sit against the back of that, if you understand what I'm saying. So my eight, my 90 mil measurement needs to come from about 10 mil forward to there, and then it'll fit. Because you can sometimes rush into this, take your measurement, measure off the front, back, go to fit and you go, it's 10 mil short. What have I done? There's a big gap at the back now, which would suck. So yeah, just thinking about it and sort of doing these bits and pieces and taking it into account makes it a bit easier. So yeah, uh, I've done that. So I'm now going to trim it through. You can see I'm already set up. So I basically put four marks at 90 across it, put my rail on. What I've done is at the end, I've just put this on just to keep this end of the board weighted down because what I don't want to do is when I'm starting my cut over here, I don't want this to then wibble with the vibrations and then travel out of sync with where my lines are. So. By weighing it down, I can get my cut started, bring it all the way through to the here, take this off, and then just carry on through them. Simples. So, it's now officially trimmed, as you just saw. All the way through, very nice. All I've then done is just done a little notch out using a jigsaw, just to go around like that recess there. And then, same over this side, you've got this little jutty out bit, so i just done that, just transferred that mark onto there, it's a piece of cake. But then you can see my adhesive, all on, all evenly spaced. So all that's left to do now is take that, splodge it on. I'm gonna need two hands to do this though, so I'm gonna quickly do that. And there you go. How much better does that look? Just a lot. So I sealed it in place as well now, so it's glued and sealed it. I've got a couple of bricks just to stop it trying to protrude forward. One at both ends, because it's just trying to pull away a little bit. So the adhesive will get that stuck, the silicone kind of go off fast because of the temperature because it's quite warm out here. So that is that uh, essentially done. All I need to do now is bespoke build my little end cap. Because see what I mean? That isn't the best thing to look at. Nobody wants to look at that. So in fact, follow moi. Oh, I think, where did I put it? All I grabbed was um, a corner fascia trim. Just any bit of like flat plastic really to kind of um, have something to play around with. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Where did I sling it? It's in there somewhere. I'll get back to you in a minute. I found it. Where is it? Right, this is what the other end of it looks like. So basically, you started off with this. And then what I did was, chopped off 
that bit there so a bit of protrudes down just stop, so it stops you from sitting flush on the bench so just like you chopped that diamond part off there gonna put it on and then just run a blade straight through to give me a nice neat straight cut done the length cut which now brings me to this stage so now it's the right length and what I want to do is see this nice edge here on the top I want that to be on the top of the threshold so what I've done is I've taken a measurement at the front and the back because obviously don't forget a threshold has a slight um, incline on it so I transferred that measurement to here so now all I need to do is do this cut across here and then I now have a lovely bespoke piece of finish so what I'm going to do is I can't obviously do this cut on here so I'm just going to use the old fine tool follow that line boom it's a simple straightforward cut and then I shall proffer it up and hopefully it will go where it needs to go Now, what I'll say is if you're doing this cut home, put it on something flat that you can cut onto, but I kind of want to just do it with the camera so you can see it. And I've got quite a steady angle, so I'll be using this stuff for donkey years. But if you're a bit uncertain about how you use your tools and that, just put it straight on the surface and then cut. But there you go, you've seen how I've cut it now. So now, smaller in there, bigger in there, that should go straight up and then it should be perfect. So there you go, cut and fit. So what I've done was, in the end, look at that. Can you see it? Where am I looking? Oh, yeah. There you go, beautiful. So to get the like nice little curved edge on it, and to straighten up the edges, just got a little baby rasp, and just like use that just to file it down, just to create the edge that matches perfectly with the one that's on the threshold, or the fascia, depending on how you want to look at it. And now, what I walk all the way through for? Do you know what? It's automatically walking into the shade. That is now looking absolutely gorgeous. <coughs> so like I said, I'll put a bag of pea shingle tomorrow, and chuck it down there, and that's gonna make that gap look a bit neater. I say a bit neater. No two ways about it, it's gonna look a lot neater. Right, now the final piece for this area of decking is securing these bad boys. So, let me get set up. Let me show you me like um, putting a nice little chamfer on the edge of it just to make it look a bit neater. And we'll see where we go. So, here we go. Trying to put a nice little edge on there, nice and angle. So I'm just using my um, dual 18 volt. Uh, I've got it set to one, which is basically, if you can see it, the depth you can see on the bottom, it's got that like recess. So that's going to create, that'll sit nicely on the edge and that's going to get my 90 degree bevel. So all you need to do is basically get yourself in position, make sure a nice flat surface. <laughs> And there you have a beautiful angled edge straight away. And this bit, I don't looks like fresh wood because it is that old get that dirty relatively quickly. So you don't got to worry about that and think, oh no, it's never going to be the same. That will carry a match to that easy peasy. But that just looks a lot nicer, which makes me happy. So right, so what I'm going to do now is do it to the other six. And then I should show you how I fix them in place. Right, now they're all lovely and angled. I've now lined them up. What the client has decided, they would like it level with the front of this backboard here. So you don't have like a part board, so it looks like you're missing a board. It's just looking flush onto a finished board. Looks lovely, happy days. The way I secure these is using these uh, in-depth timber screws. These are 150 mil deep. So you can see once it kind of goes in, plenty of bite, plenty of space, it still nips through the 20 minute of this and then still get through to the actual um the joist that runs basically through the center here what i've done is on each one i've marked 100 mils across and then divided it by obviously the width so it's about 72 and a half mil there done that for all of them so i've literally got my screw point for each and every one what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna run around pilot it with a five mil piece as deep as that's gonna go because it's only gonna go so far i'll then transfer over to a universal bit 
which I think is about eight mil. And then that'll go down through and then that'll hit the deck. Once I feel it hit the deck, I will stop and then I'll get my impact driver the right bit and do this. Now, the reason I'm piloting it is because technically I could go through straight with that, done and dusted. But if this hits a knot or whatever, it then starts going at weird angles or whatever, it's just a pain. It's a lot harder for the impact driver to get it through because obviously it's quite a chunk of wood. It would still do it because <laughs> it's the wall. But this just makes life easier. And I know then that my pilot hole is absolutely straight as a die. So it's gonna be straight through, easy peasy. The screw's gonna drop straight in and then the only work that it's really got to do is just nip it through the um, composite board into the joist. Nice and simple. So I'll do this one just so you can see it. And just make sure it's not on hammer. I'm doing this left hand as well. Going forward, so literally. And because it's only five mil, it nips to the reeds as opposed to going through with the universal bit. You know, it just starts it off nicely. So what I'm gonna do is run the length of that, then I'll go get the other bit out, and I'll do that as well. Right, so I've done my five mil, I've gone through with the eight mil bit, and then what I've done is, can you just see that? So basically, you can just see if I can get one to stay still. That's basically the same width as the head, right? So what I've then done is just like pass it just about five mil into it, just at the top. So what will happen is when I screw it in, it'll counter sink it a little bit. See like that, takes it a bit further in, which is much, much better. And that way, because if he's lifted kind of on the surface, if you're walking on it, it might hurt a bit. <laughs> so, so by punching it just below the surface, it means when you're walking across it, it's not going to hurt yourself. So I've done, I've kind of synced them. So all I'm going to do now is run through with me and Pat Driver. Every time I put a new one down, I'm going to make sure it's perfectly aligned. And what I'm doing is standing on it while I screw it, because basically I'm a good counterweight. I'll make sure that doesn't twist or try to bow. Once it's secured, happy days, jobs are good. So I will now go through basically do those in situ in fact why not i've got one here i'll show you it going in so literally standing like this don't have the cameras there it is and because it's piloted done i run through now do the rest happy days you only need two in each of these and then they are not going to twist not going to bend not going to go anywhere and that is your step done Beautiful and now secured. And do you know what I did? Because I actually had six more of those 150 mil like tech screws left, I put an extra one on each one. So basically it's now one in center, off center from the center. Does that, does the word center come up a lot then? But basically these are through the exact center. These are now through the center again, but that direction, but just a third of the way through the front there. The reason for that is a bit like I said before on a couple of other videos, if you do every screw in a line, there's the possibility that it'll rock that way and that way because essentially you've created a pivot point. I mean, these won't because they've been put down well, but again, good practice. Put it forward. You've now got fixings across that point and that point, which means it can't rock backwards or forwards. I see screws. I time on my hands. Done it. Over-engineered. Now, to the back. By the way, that is all beautifully finished now. All I'll do is like clean it up. <laughs> Love it. Next one is here. So this one is basically gonna be two boards wide, this section here, off of the garden room. And then outside the main zone, we're gonna have about just under a meter, I think, pulled out. I'll, I'll obviously work it out to get a full board in for the full width. So wherever that's gonna be, will be how wide out that one's gonna go. And then over the corner, you can see we've compressed some stones in already. That's just gonna be another little flower pot area, just two boards. So essentially two boards, full section for a step up, two boards all the way through. So looking at this, I'm just deciding like how I'm gonna tack it. Uh, it looks quite cool actually. So I've obviously got these slabs here. So it could well be that I end up putting my uh, 50 mil joist there, sit on there, into there, and then screw through these supports all here, which are all level with the front of this board that the whole thing is built on. Which you just realize it's like, was that 18mm? That's, that's a bit thin for 18mm. Interesting just way to build it. <laughs> it does a job though, it's still standing. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So yeah, so basically I put the 50mm on there, screw through all these, which will give me a fixing point. And that means this part of the, the actual part of the structure is on a solid base. It's screwed in tight to the building and then everything can come off of there. Easy peasy, 
lemon squeezy. So, but I'm gonna double check my levels, double check that the, the 50 mil fits there and blah, blah, blah. So I start calculating all that stuff and then see what I get to. So what I've decided to do is I'm using it. So you can see that is my baton uh, set on this shelf, which is beautiful. And if you look in like I just showed you a minute ago, you can see somewhere in there, you can see like the feet that this is built on just in there. I marked off all these where they're gonna meet. I've counted, I've pre-drilled it with a five mil bit and I've just gone through with one of these just to, um, what do you call, chamfer the head in, so just kind of pulls it through. So there you can see, look, below the surface, nice and tight. Give it a little tap with a hammer because this isn't actually that straight, as in like following the build, it's a bit wibbly wobbly, but I don't really care about that. Not at the moment. So because these are all out now countersunk, just go straight up to it. Pulls it lovely and tight. Done. So that is now that, gonna be beautiful. And now that's ready for joist hangers to come off of. And that's the only thing to take into account is because you can see, look, it protrudes further out from the building here than say it does over there. When I get my next joist, which would be the one that floats across here, I'll, all these knockings will just be a slightly different cut. I'm not that fast because actually this has made my life a bit easier because that way I know this is actually attached to the building absolutely beautifully, tough as old boots, and I can always compensate for this part of it. So I'm a happy boy. So I'm gonna get the next one cut, trimmed and fit, pilot it, countersunk it, drill it, and then I'll see what my lines are doing and uh, we'll work it out from there. Turns out I didn't realise what the time was. It's actually about 10 minutes before I'm leaving anyway, so happy days. <laughs> it's always a nice surprise, isn't it? But there we go, see? So this area is now fully complete. Looking good, those bricks will come off tomorrow once it's all dried and happy. To be fair, it could probably come off now, but you know, I'll leave it, let it set completely. But that is looking stonking. First run, first bar is now on across there as well. So happy days, tomorrow turn up and get that area cracked off. But yes, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, it really, really helps me out a lot if you do. And uh, there's always good content coming up, there's always different bits and pieces and lots of tips and tricks. Have a lovely one, and I shall see you all again tomorrow.